Happy New Year, everybody. Practical Prepper here from the Practical Prepping blog. URL appearing at the bottom of the screen right now. Well, it's January 2nd, 2011. Haven't been with you for a while. There's a good reason for that. My Sony Webby HD camera kind of went uh, tee up on me. And uh, haven't had a video camera or any video capability for over a month now. I'm sorry about that, but I've uh, been a little remiss in posting videos for that reason. I've got a Samsung HX204 staring at me right now. Seems to be doing a good job, so we'll see what this video looks like when I post it tonight. Bought this camera for a hiking trip we're going to be taking this summer out west to Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. I'm going to bring it along with me and use some of the stuff I'm going to show you today on that trip and see how it works out. One thing I've been trying to do on the uh, Practical Prepping blog, both in written form and in video, is to show the beginning prepper uh, answers to some problems that uh, they may have. I mean, uh, starting to prep is, is a mindset. You've got to, first of all, you've got to make the decision to do it. And once you do it, you've got to build up a skill set, and that's the hardest part. So uh, I am not an expert by any means. And then what I try to do is lend my experience. I've been doing it for a little bit, a little while now, about three years, four years. So um, I try to offer some solutions to, uh, to problems that beginning preppers face. One of the ones I thought of recently, and I thought I might want to do my first video of the new year on, is... Uh, fire starting, which is something we all take for granted because, hey, we all got matches and propane lighters. It's really easy to do, but it's not that easy to do if you're out on the trail or you're in an emergency situation um, or you're bugging out and uh, you don't have a propane lighter or you may not have a box of Strike Anywhere matches, and what do you do? Well, there are some simple tools you can use. Um, I'm going to show you those in a minute. I'm going to show you the techniques you might want to use to start a fire out in the wild without using matches or lighters. Very simple skill, but again, um, this is not an advanced website. If you're looking for advanced tips on the, like I say in my introduction on how to plant claymore mines around your perimeter, this is not the one. But if you're interested in some basic prepping skills, like starting fires, come with me. I'll show you how to do that. In fact, let's mosey on over to the fire pit. Let's take a look. Okay, what you see in front of you is a fire pit that the Practical Preppers household uses to, uh, to light fires here in the frigid nights in South Florida. <laughs> there aren't that many, but there have been some in the last couple of weeks that have, believe it or not, have gone into the 30s. So as you can see, it's pretty well used. I've got a little bit of firewood cut over here to the right. Let me show you that. I'll turn my camera right there, zoom in a little bit on it. Not much, just enough to make a decent sized fire tonight. And uh, notice what I have in the pit itself. I've got some pretty large size pits of wood that I've cut with my uh, Smith & Wesson search and rescue knife and a, and a hatchet, a little camp axe, and I've got some slightly smaller pieces of wood and what you might call little splinters of wood over there on the left, and some kindling I found, some old grass clippings that I had um, cut the grass a few weeks ago and left those in the corner and they kind of dried out now, so that's perfect for fire starting. So what I'd like to do is without any further ado, show you how to do this but first of all quick philosophy basically when you're starting a fire out in the wild you need small pieces of grass or moss or some kind of dry tinder uh, to get it going I'm going to use like I said my old grass clipping from last week and then once the fire is started with the small little kindling bit here you add larger pieces of as dry wood as you can find. Usually skip that off with a knife. You can kind of use your knife on a larger piece of wood to kind of get pieces like that um, accumulated because these will help keep the fire going, sustain it. Then you add larger pieces of wood to make the fire hotter and bigger. And finally when you start adding pieces of wood like this, it's you know you've got a, a decent sized fire that's not going to go out on you with a gust of wind. And then of course once that's sustained you're good to go with the larger pieces of wood. We're going to be using a fire steel fire starter, a little striker, flint material with a piece of steel. That makes a beautiful spark when you strike it, very, very hot. And from my bag here, a piece of prep material that every prepper should, uh, should have in their arsenal and never leave home without. And that is a piece of 
petroleum jelly impregnated cotton. It can be any kind of petroleum jelly. Even synthetic cotton works pretty good with this stuff. Basically, it'll, it holds a flame, even in the wind, and will allow you to start a fire under some pretty bad conditions. Uh, conditions couldn't be better today in South Florida. It's in the 70s, no wind. But uh, just to make the video, I'm going to show you how this actually works. You take your striker, put it very, very close to the cotton, and give it a few shots here. Usually he lights on the first shot. Turn that over. There we go. Burning real nice. Now I'm going to use my yard clippings that I found here as kindling to get that going. And add some small pieces of wood to the top of that. And see if we can't get a fire that uh, sustains itself a little bit. There we go. Put some more here over this piece of burning cotton. You want to get that wood going as best you can. So don't be too careless with where you put the pieces of wood to, to start up. Notice I'm being kind of careful here in this corner. Got a nice flame going there. There you go. Blow a little into that. Got some air going. So now, you can see some of those little pieces of wood have, have caught. I'm going to add a couple more before I put some of the larger pieces on here to see if they can go. I like the ones with the freight ends like this. They seem to uh, catch fire really well. So let's add them carefully. I'm a big fan of uh, making a little teepee out of my firewood here. And then we just, just aim it into a uh, to ever increasing pyramid shape. You can see that's going pretty good. I can either save these little pieces for later or stick them on there to make sure the fire is going. But as you can see, it's catching on pretty well. So in a little while I'll be adding the larger pieces and then once I got a good fire going I could add the even larger ones. And I've got a good fire here for a couple hours. If I wanted to cook around it or make coffee or just stay warm, it'd be a really nice thing to have and this is a great skill to learn. So. Um, while you don't have to purchase this particular fire steel brand, there's lots of brands of uh, sparking material to start fires. Generic cotton balls and petroleum jelly is a really good thing to have in your bug out bag or basically even in, in your general home preps. Because uh, in an emergency situation, you may not always have a propane lighter or maybe you can't find a match. And you'd be, you'd be amazed at how hard it is to start a fire without a match or a propane lighter if you don't have the right tools. Unless you want to rub sticks together. Uh, I'm not going to do that. We'll leave that to Bear Grylls. Okay, you got a pretty decent fire going here. Probably going to add some larger pieces of wood. Save those for another day. And uh, if you've never seen this before, I hope you enjoyed seeing how a fire is made with a piece of cotton and petroleum jelly and a nice fire steel striker. This petroleum, uh, petroleum jelly is a wonderful thing on cotton and it just sustains that flame really well. So this is Practical Prepper with the first video of the new year. Wishing you a happy and safe new year. And uh, there'll be more videos to come in the Starting a Fire Without Matches or Lighters series. Be safe, be prepared.